So, we are back. We have looked at first order logic, syntax, semantics, truth values, rules of inference, forward chaining, implicit quantifier form and how to treat existentially quantified variables using this method of scholomization. We will take a short detour and I would like to talk about what was happening in the 1980s, uh, which was in the world of AI, the era of uh, expert systems, rule based expert systems. So, what had happened was that people were writing these programs which could do this kind of influences and so on and uh, uh, they wanted to implement applications uh, in various domains and where do you get that knowledge from that something implies something else. They said we will go to the experts in the domain and they evolved the whole approach of knowledge acquisition that they would interview them and somehow extract the rules from them and uh, they would extract the rules that is why they are called rule based systems and they call them expert systems because the rules were extracted from experts and the hope was that uh, the program that they built would perform like a human expert decision. In some cases this was successful, in some cases it was not possible because it was difficult to extract the rules that people were using implicitly. But nevertheless it was a very successful, successful phase of application of this, this thing and uh, it used this notion of rules that is why we are bringing it in here essentially. So, as I said in the 80s the idea that you can capture the knowledge of human experts in the form of rules, this rules is important essentially and you know that is where we are making inferences led to the development of expert systems. Rule based systems or production systems as they were called were used in general in general to decompose a problem and address it in parts essentially. Every rule would expert would kind of address a part of a problem and eventually if you had a whole bunch of rules and you had a problem then you know eventually by applying rules different rules it would get solved that was the idea. The rules would come from experts essentially. So, in the most abstract form a rule or a production is a statement of the form left hand side, right hand side which is like an implication statement in which the computation flows from the left hand side to the right hand side which is what we are calling as forward chaining. So, if you know the left hand side then you can kind of conclude the right hand side. In practice production rules can be used both in forward direction and backward direction. So, once we are done with this rule based uh, introduction we will actually move towards back, backward reasoning or backward chaining and we will see that that is another way of doing inferences which has its own advantages. And in fact, uh, rule based systems were also built in backward chaining and we will look at a language called prolog uh, which does backward chaining essentially. But uh, in general we are now looking at the data driven aspect of it which is forward chaining. The production looks like pattern followed by action in the forward chaining context. In the backward reasoning context it is it's more logical in nature. The pattern is in the given database and the action could be something add a new statement or even delete a new statement. We have not talked about deleting statements here, but in rule based expert system you could delete statements and that ends up in a, in a slightly more complex logic which is sometimes called as a non monotonic logic because you know you prove something and then you delete it later uh, then it is no longer true and that is why it is called non monotonic. The set of true statements can go up and go down and go up and go down but we are not getting into that right now. We want to just look at this and connect with the fact that forward reasoning, forward chaining in logic is tied up to this expert systems area. So, the rule based system looks at part of a state triggers some action then a when a pattern is matched and this process goes on essentially. Here is uh, an example of a rule in a language called OPS5 that OPS5 was you know somewhat ambitiously uh, 
named as official production system language. It was it came out of CMU where some of this work was done uh, as, as mentioned here and Charles Forgey whose work we will see later in the course uh, was one who did this. But here we are not talking about expert systems and all we are just looking at the language essentially or the nature of a rule. Uh, so, let us look at both the rule in English and in this OPS 5 like language. Uh, let us call the rule as it has a name called interchange and our task is to sort an array essentially. So, what this rule says that if there is an element at index i and whose value is n and if there is another element at index j which is greater than i but whose value m is less than n then you just swap those two elements uh, bring m to uh, so bring m to index i and bring n to index g so that the smaller number comes first and uh, it is an ascending array of numbers essentially. So, what this rule is simply saying spot two numbers out of place and swap them essentially as simple as that and you can imagine if you think about this, this one rule will actually sort your whole array just run it enough number of times it will spot two numbers out of place and change them of course, it will not be efficient and that is why we do not use this uh, approach, but it will do the task for you. In this language uh, ops 5 which is just a very quick introduction, uh, uh, we have uh, this notation which says attribute and value. When I say value, I am even allowing things like relational symbols and things like that essentially. So, the same thing is said in this particular language. If in the array at index i there is a value n and if at in the array at index j which is greater than i there is a value m which is less than n, then modify the uh, two, two locations. The first one should contain m and the second one should contain n. This is just an example of a rule and uh, there are many, many things you can do simply by expressing your program as a rule essentially. So, here is one system which was became very popular. This was called R1 or XCON, X XCON meaning uh, it was a CON is for configuration and X comes from wax machines which was a, a, a very popular machine in the mid 80s, uh, DEC Wax, DEC was the company, Digital Equipment Corporation. What this program would do is that it would help people configure their machines that they were buying. In those days, machines were not as simple as going and buying a small mobile which is a, which is a computer nowadays you had to you know have a room for the machine first and then uh, put in your specs and get this whole big machine which occupied a significant part of a room. So, he this was written by McDermott, McDermott is the same McDermott who is part of you know Charniak and McDermott the book which was very popular. Uh, he developed a forward chaining rule based system for configuring the computer systems this thing. So, okay, so I said WAX, X stands for expert and CON stands for configurer was built for the computer company deck essentially and it was quite successful. It processed over 80,000 orders with accuracy of over 95 percent essentially. There is a small anecdote of why it was called R1 and then changed to XCON. So, some it is not clear whether this is true or not, but anyway apparently McDermott he said that 3 years ago I wanted to be a knowledge engineer and today I R1. Uh, so, this R1 is where R1 comes from, but 
you must always take this with a pinch of salt. So, it is a power chaining rule based system that works from requirements towards uh, uh, configurations uh, without backtracking. There is a nice book on expert systems by Peter Jackson also written in 1986 and uh, you can read more about this if you get access to this book. So, it had knowledge about components. Uh, for example, you know what are the specifications of every component and knowledge about constraints. So, you know how should components feed into each other and essentially it did this uh, whole process by this rule based search. It is a kind of a search which it was doing. So, it stored component knowledge in a separate database and this is an example of the kind of knowledge that we are not particularly interested in that it is just to illustrate this idea that when we are talking about a universe module, then it is of a type disk drive it, and it supports something buffered NPR whatever, whatever. And rules were of the if then kind that is what we want to illustrate here this thing. So, this rule says for example, if the most current active context this context was an idea used in ops 5 to channelize computation because if you have hundreds of rules, which rules do you match? So, the language allowed you to set context and say in this context only these rules are applicable. So, if the context is distributing mass based devices, then if the, all these conditions are true, which we will I will not read out, you can read them at leisure, then assign the describe to the mass process. Okay. So, if these conditions are met, then you will say that okay, this is a describe that you are using and so on. So, that was a very quick uh, introduction to uh, rule based systems. Uh, we will come back to rule based systems. In fact, we will come back to forward chaining rule based systems and we will look at this work of Charles Foji, which said that if you have these hundreds of rules and if you have this hundreds of pieces of data and you want to match rules with data and in every cycle once you match something you decide which of the matching ones you will actually execute then that will go and make some change in the data. So, you do the match all over again and then keep going through this cycle. This was called a match resolve execute cycle. We will visit that a little bit later. Once we are done with logic a little bit, we will spend a little bit of time and there was a very nice uh, algorithm called Rete algorithm which uses a structure of uh, called Rete network mm -hmm. which is very popular in, in industry even now essentially. We will come back to that later. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, we will take a break, come back to logic and having finished forward chaining forward reasoning, we will look at backward chaining or backward reasoning. So, we will see you in the next session. Mm -hmm.